Yo, what's up everyone? It's Gad here, back with episode 14, finally. It's been a long time coming. I know <laughs> it's probably not the video a lot of you have been wanting to see. I keep seeing people asking for weapon switching. So I'm going to do that in the next episode for sure. Because now we've got this enemy and the ragdoll completed. <laughs> and then, so we'll finish this up in this episode. It's not going to take very long. And then, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll add weapon switching by the end of this week. But we'll see. So, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Alright, so a quick recap where we left off last episode, and that is where we've got this enemy here. And then when you shoot him, you see in the console it say hit. And then we shoot him five times, and then it's going to say death down there. Because obviously he's lost all his health. And there's only one thing I've changed since the episode, and that is just putting this debug as an else statement, so it doesn't say hit and death at the same time. And then, so, now we can carry on with this video and actually add a ragdoll to this enemy. And then, so, to do that, it's really simple. All we need to do is go onto the game object panel up here, go to 3D object, and then add in a ragdoll. And that's going to bring up this little setup wizard here. And then, so, we just need to fill in the transform of all the bones here. So, if I open up this enemy, uh, this enemy object, and then you can see here the hips, which is going to go into the pelvis here. And then so the left hips, we're going to go left up leg. And then you can check as well if you click on the um, the game object in the hierarchy, if this is going to be the right one. So like you see it says left leg here, and you see it's at the left knee, so you're going to know that that's the one to put in the left knee. And then left foot is obvious, it's just called left foot. And now for the right legs, right up leg, the right leg for the knee, and then the right foot for the foot obviously. And then, so the left arm, you see we've got a left shoulder here, but we actually want the one that says left arm. So we're going to drag that into the left arm there. The left forearm will be the elbow. And then once again, if you click on it, you can double check if that's the where it's meant to be. And then, so the right arm, so we're just going to put the right arm in there, the right forearm for the right elbow. And the middle spine, I'm going to drag in spine one there. And then finally for the head, it's just going to be the head. Surprise, surprise put that in there and then the total mass I'm just going to bump this up to 70 and then so this strength here is going to be the stiffness of the joints so if this is zero it's going to be kind of loose and more floppy and then if you put up the strength it's going to be well more stiff um, and finally this flip forward if you click on the hips here and then this uh, Z direction is facing backwards you're going to want to click flip forward but mine's facing the right way so we can just click create and then so you can see now it just adds in all these colliders and then if we click on say the left up leg you can see we've got a character joint here which we can change like the kind of angle that it can move and then also you can change the uh, stiffness in here as well if you wanted to and then so I'm not going to do this in this episode but there's a good chance that you're going to want to um, change these colliders because you can see this thigh one is really big the one for his shin is huge, so you just want to go around tweaking all the uh, the radiuses and heights for these, because you can see where we've got all these gaps, like where the neck is. If you get sh if you get shot in the neck, it's just not going to register at all because there's no collider there. Well, there won't be when we remove this capsule collider, because we're not going to need that anymore. So now that's done. So this character is now a ragdoll. If we press play, you'll see it happening straight away. See so him just drop and then fall to the ground but obviously it's not much of a game if the enemies are always laying on the ground and can't do anything so we're going to add a new component to it and then call this the ragdoll manager and then so this is basically going to be in charge of setting the ragdoll active or not <laughs> so I'm going to create an add open it up and then so up here first of all we're going to have a rigid body array and then call this RBs. And then in the start, we're just going to set the RBs equal to get components in children. So I'm just going to add an S in there. And then the type, obviously, is going to be a rigid body. And then so now this is all filled up with the rigid bodies for the whole ragdoll. We can make a for each loop. And this is going to be for each rigid body called RB in RBs. Then what we're going to do to these is RB dot is kinematic. So it is equal to true. And if you don't know what is kinematic is on the rigid bodies, it's basically when this is set to true, gravity isn't going to affect the rigid body and neither are external forces. 
So that's what we want because we just want him to stay in the pose for his animations or whatever, even though we've got no animations at the moment. And then, so instead of this update, we're just going to create a public void. And then I'm going to call this trigger ragdoll. And then in here, we're just going to copy this line from the start. But instead of it being set to true, we're going to set to false. And then, so now we can actually go ahead and trigger this when the enemy's dead. So in the enemy health script, I'm going to create a ragdoll manager reference here. And then just call this ragdoll manager. And then in the start, we need to get this. So I'm going to create the start function. And then this is simply going to be ragdoll manager equals get component. And then obviously the ragdoll manager. And then so now we've got the ragdoll manager in the enemy def. We can just go ragdoll manager dot trigger ragdoll. And then so now that's done, we can test this out. All right, so if we shoot the guy now, obviously we're going to hit him five times and now he's going to drop. But you can see that it just doesn't look great when he kind of sh he dies and has no reaction to being killed. He just kind of drops his legs. We kind of want him to be flying back a little bit. So we're going to add a kickback force for when he for when he's dead. So when he gets killed, he's going to go flying back in the air a little bit. And then so to set that up, that's fairly simple. In the weapon manager, we're going to add a property here or add a variable. It's going to be this one needs to be public actually, a public float. And then just call this enemy kickback uh, force force set is equal to 100 by default. And then also in the bullet script here, we're going to have to have a hide an inspector. Well, it doesn't have to be hide an inspector. Do it if you want. The public vector three. Call this direction. And then back in the weapon manager once again, where we fire and we spawn in the bullet here. You can see we've got a reference to the bullet script, so we're just going to set the bullet script dot direction, and this is going to be the direction we're adding the force in. So it's going to be set equal to the barrel position dot transform dot forward. So basically, when we shoot the weapon, it's going to store the direction that the bullet has been shot in, and then so when we add the force when it hits the player and the player is dead, we can add the force in the direction that the bullet was going. And then so that's all we need to do in the weapon manager, I believe. And then so in the bullet, what we're going to do is check if the uh, enemy health dot health is less than or equal to zero. Then what we're going to do is get the rigid body that we've hit. So we're just going to go rigid body RB set this equal to collision dot game object dot get component. And this is going to be a rigid body. And now we've got this, we can just go rb.addForce, and then this is going to be in the direction, which is going to be times by the weapon dot enemy kickback force. And then finally, we just want to make a force mode, and then force mode dot impulse. So now this will work, and we can test this out real quick, but there's one change I want to make to this after. So you can see, now when we shoot him, hit him five times. He now kind of falls forward and then kind of gets launched by the bullet when he dies. But the problem with this is every time we shoot the enemy, even if he's dead, it's going to add the force every time, which we don't really want. You can if you want, but I don't want that, so I'm going to change it. So in the weapon, or the enemy health actually, we're going to have a variable here, which is going to be a hide and inspector, public, float, <laughs> not not a float, not a float. We want a public ball. Call this is dead. And then, so in here, if the enemy health is less than or equal to zero and enemy health dot is dead equals false. At the bottom here, now well, equals equals false. What we're going to do is just set the enemy health dot is dead to true. So that means that this force is only going to be added once. And that's going to be on the shot that has killed the enemy. So now when we test this out, it, you probably won't really notice because I haven't showed you this before. But when we shoot the enemy when he's dead, he's going to fly or he's going to get some kickback anyway. Because we are firing a rigid body at him. So the force from the bullet travelling through the air is what's actually moving him. Rather than adding the force manually through the code. 
All right, so that's everything for this video. I'll try my best to upload another video soon. But I'm just quite busy at the moment with things. But so if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.